Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Brian here. Um, before I begin, I wrote 555 words yesterday. Not as much as I wanted, but I hit this weird wave where I just got suddenly exhausted out of nowhere and I needed to take a nap. Probably because I hadn't eaten. Um, I, I made food and I ate, but yeah, kind of let that slip my mind when I was doing housework and on the phone with my, my, my parents. But yeah, so, this appears to be the week of daily vlogs, which I'm cool with. Um, I was curious, at least two or three of you, uh, in comments and throughout the videos, have mentioned that uh, you guys know what it's like to be in that creative slump, or uh, yeah, you need to start writing, or whatever. Basically, you, you've, you've been there, or you currently are there, and uh, seeing as how I'm trying to rocket myself out, um, I figured maybe some give and take. I do the vlog to uh, help myself, but uh, I was curious, maybe having you guys talk about your interests would, uh, would help. So I'm curious, what do you guys like to write? Um, like, you know, what, what kind of genres, what influences do you like to have? Uh, do, you, do, you, do you like to have? What influences do you have? And um, just so many ums this video. In general, like, what's, what's your style? Do you prefer third person, first person, uh, third person omniscient, third person focused, you know, um, uh, favorite authors, favorite genre, uh, set pieces, all that kind of stuff. Uh, for me, how many times do I say on this video? <laughs> I prefer to write from a set in the real world, like, re not, like, I want to experiment with some non-realistic stuff, but just generally I like the internal struggle, usually first-person narrative with occasional uh, like first-person but from different perspectives uh, tricks. But generally speaking, all right, first-person, usually past tense. Um, and my, my stories are very rarely about direct conflict. Um, the way I like to write through projects and ideas and stories I've had and just kind of side stories I've written on the side in my own free time, I write in this... Consistent universe, I'll have similar characters reoccur, especially through the form of one central antagonist, or not antagonist, but one central kind of just um, guy who likes to screw with people, and uh, he shows up a lot, and I'll have certain characters show up a lot, and I have some, some characters whose story I only tell through the background, like through, through events going on in multiple books, you just learn a bit more about their life from how they are at that point in time. And I do this because um, one of my favorite shows is Durarara. It's an anime, um, as you can probably tell from the name. And Durarara is about a, one small chunk of a, one small chunk of one small city. Uh, I think it's in Tokyo. I'm not sure, but it's in Japan. And it's about the city. Like the, the whole show is just about the city. It's told from the perspective of a myriad of different characters. Every character has one or two different narrators. And um, if like the story is very slow because the story is told kind of very disjointedly um, from the multiple perspectives at multiple points in, time, points in time, and the whole show is about the ongoing events of that city. And I actually didn't mean to start, like, that wasn't a direct inspiration. Um, I was actually writing like that before I discovered Durarara, Durarara, and um, it's Durarara, I can't talk. And uh, basically, I realized, hey, this is actually kind of how I write. I didn't mean to, but um, having something to look to and just have an example kind of inspired me. And in terms of themes and um, you know, breakdowns and stuff and literary devices, I'm a big fan of John Green's work. Uh, he uses a lot of that look back at the past and tell a story. Like, I described it to an ex of mine. It's like a cool story you would have from high school elaborated on. Like, one night me and my friends drove to Walmart. You know, like, like it's a very simple premise. It's not, not to insult it. It's a simple premise elaborated on from the perspective of someone with an obvious... Um, an obvious awareness of looking into the past, but also not willing to divulge the fact of looking into the past, like uh, looking for Alaska. It, it's very much obvious that the narrator of the story knows what's going on. Because uh, Miles, I think? It's been a while since I read the book. Miles, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Miles. He's aware of what's going on um, in, from past tense, but the narration is all present tense, you, mostly present tense, mostly, or if it is past tense, it's just barely past tense. But you get a general sense of how the narrative is constructed because there's a countdown going throughout the book that Miles, the character, could not know if he was not telling this story from the perspective of looking back at the past. And I think it's a really good literary device. It's a really, really, really clever mechanic to get the reader into the mindset of remember when you were in high school, remember when you were in middle school. It's, it's not paid attention to, like some of my characters, um, Alexander, my current narrator, directly references the fact that this is recalling to the past because 
he looks at this time in his life and hates it. He wants nothing to do with it, and he wants it to stay behind him. So he, he specifically calls it out as, I was stupid. I was an idiot. I, I used to be like this. And I have other characters, um, such as Nick or Chris, who don't think of that as their past. They, they either can't escape their past or they accept it as just part of who they are. So they are absorbed into it, and their, their narration, while still set in the past with past tense, is very more locally focused. So what kind of stuff do you guys like to do? Um, those are a lot of the things that... Uh, I know sudden end. I didn't mean to end it, actually. But yeah, like, what kind of stuff are you guys curious about? Um, like, I want to hear what, what your techniques and your tricks and your narrator, narrations. And even if you're not writing, um, like composer, com composition. I know nothing about composition, but I love experimental artists. And I really like David Bowie conceptually, but I just, because of the recording quality of the era, I can't really get into him. But like artists like Beck and you know, other people who experiment with what it means to be a song, I really like because they can tell a lot more with just the random small ticks in their songs than they could overall or with their entire album they tell more of a story without having to divulge all the information uh painters can do this a lot too you know uh, artists um you know the artist drawing the, the the hand drawn stuff the hand done stuff uh sculptors i know have a lot of cool techniques to draw that kind of effect as well i'm friends with a lot of people who like sculpting but yeah uh so i was curious what kind of stuff you like to do and i i and i'm still a very small channel with only seven subscribers but seven people i was not expecting and thank you it's just every time i look i just i smile a little bit because it's just like look people like people are watching uh, so yeah, what kind of stuff do you like to do? I'm actually going to be fairly inactive in the next few days, just like in terms of stuff to do. I've mostly got laundry, so I don't really have to do a lot in the next few days. So I was really, I, if you guys post comments and stuff, I will reply and I'll try to have longer drawn out conversations. You can email me. I'm kind of bad about checking my email though. Uh, it's in the description, but I'm kind of bad about checking my email. But um, yeah, so I was just curious. What do you like to write? I look forward to your responses. Have a good one, guys.